Welcome to Floracast, the podcast for greenhouse growers. Floracast is brought to you by Greenhouse Grower Magazine, in conjunction with the University of New Hampshire, North Carolina State University, Kansas State University, and Cornell University. Thanks to this podcast sponsor, Fine Americas. This week's podcast is from Brian Whipker of North Carolina State University. Hello, welcome to this podcast discussing plant growth regulators. Everyone uses PGRs to control excessive plant stretch. But did you know that PGRs also provide additional benefits? Today I will share with you some of the other advantages when using PGRs which improve plant quality. Let's get started. First of all, I need to share with you specifically which chemicals I'm referring to. This presentation discusses the effects of PGRs which block the biochemical pathway which produces GA. We discussed this process in a prior podcast. GA is the hormone which encourages cell elongation. By blocking that pathway, the plants are then shorter. The PGRs which block the GA pathway are listed in the table and include acimidol, chlormaquat, diminazide, fluoroprimidol, paclobutrazole, and uniconazole. I also need to point out which chemicals have different modes of action, so this presentation does not apply to them. That includes configure, all the GAs, the BAGA combinations, floral, and agio. There are three additional benefits coming from a PGR application. Greener leaves, reduce water stress, and disease suppression. We will discuss each of them over the next few slides. Have you ever noticed how the plant leaves become greener after a PGR application? The darker green color suggests that the plant has a higher chlorophyll content. Why does this occur? There are two main reasons. First of all, with a PGR application, the new plant cells do not expand as much, so they're smaller. Smaller cells mean that the chlorophyll contained in the leaves is more densely packed, which makes the leaves darker green. In addition, applying a PGR, which blocks the GA pathway, results in some secondary effects, in this case an upregulation or increase in the amount of chlorophyll produced by the plant. This illustration will help explain how the GA pathway is blocked and how additional chlorophyll is produced. The GA pathway is a series of biochemical reactions which result in the production of gibberellins. Gibberellins encourage cell elongation. By blocking the pathway, plants are then more compact. This is why we use PGRs to manage plant growth. So why do leaves become greener? Let's use the example of a beaver dam to explain it. When beavers build a dam on a creek, they do not actually totally stop the water flow. Some water still spills over the main part of the dam. That occurs when PGRs are used. You still get some plant growth, you just don't get as much. The other thing that occurs is the water is diverted elsewhere by the beaver dam. The water backs up and then spills over at some secondary places. That also occurs with the GA pathway. With blockage, other secondary biochemical reactions then occur. One upregulation reaction is the increase in the production of chlorophyll. So that is why plants become greener after a PGR application. You can see what I mean by the darker green color in this photograph. The plant on the left did not have a PGR application, while the plant on the right did. The use of anti-GA PGRs resulted in a darker green color. Reduced water stress. Reduced water stress is also a secondary effect when one uses PGRs. It all goes back to the blocked GA pathway and upregulation of a natural plant hormone called abscisic acid, also called ABA, which helps plants control water loss through their leaves. Here is a close-up of the stomates. These donut-like openings in the leaf regulate gas exchange and water loss. An increase in ABA encourages the stomates to close and avoid water loss. Less water loss means it makes the plant more water use efficient. To explain this, here is the pathway again with the blockage which results from a PGR application. With the blockage of the pathway, there is an upregulation of ABA which is beneficial to the plant. In addition, there is also an upregulation in the biochemical pathway of chemicals which block the breakdown of ABA. 
So this also leads to an increased accumulation of ABA to help the plant better manage water loss. The end result is plants treated with PGRs use less water. Here's some data from a study on cherry trees conducted with paclobutrazol. While the rates are not applicable to floriculture, the take-home message here is, with the application of a PGR, the plants use 55% less water. So the end result is there's an added water conservation bonus when treating plants with plant growth regulators. A third attribute of PGRs is disease suppression. This data applies to paclobutrazol and fluoropyrimidol. I am uncertain whether or not it applies to osimidol, diminazide, or chlormoquat, but because how the product's made, it does not apply to uniconazole. Both paclobutrazol and fluoropyrimidol block a pathway that inhibits sterile production in fungi. It is a similar mode of action used by the sterile biosynthesis inhibitor class of fungicides. Again, to explain it, here's the pathway with the blockage which results from a plant growth regulator application. A secondary pathway leading off the main GA pathway produces the building blocks used by fungi. Paclobutrazol and fluoroprimidol block that secondary pathway, so the essential chemicals needed by fungi to grow are not available. Therefore, the occurrence of disease is suppressed. In this photograph from a hive control experiment, one can clearly see how powdery mildew is starting to infect the untreated plant on the left. The plant on the right had been given a PGR drench about four weeks prior to this date, and a powdery mildew infection has been suppressed. PGRs will not provide season-long protection against foliar diseases, but it turns out they can offer a good first line of defense. Here is a close-up of the infected plant on the left without a PGR application and the plant on the right which had a PGR substrate drench. So in summary, there are a number of biochemical reactions always occurring in plants. With the use of GA blocking PGRs, there is a resulting upregulation and downregulation of a number of other reactions. Of course, plant growth is more compact. Plants are also greener because of the increased concentration of chlorophyll. Plants are healthier because of the ability to suppress foliar diseases. And plants use less water, which helps avoid drought stress. As you have heard, there are a number of additional benefits besides controlling excessive stretch when it comes to PGRs. Therefore, the use of PGRs can be considered a key component when it comes to best management practices for floriculture crops. Thanks for downloading this episode of the Floracast series, and thanks to our sponsor, Fine Americas. Help your plants shape up before they ship out with proven PGRs from Fine Americas. Manufactured under the strictest ISO 9001 standards, Fine PGRs offer uncompromising quality, superb growth control, and unbeatable value. Visit fine-americas.com or call 888-474-3463 for a distributor near you. Come back next week for the next edition of the Floriculture Podcast Series.